This parable is a pretty interesting parable. It's not a lot to it. As a matter of fact, there's only a couple of verses to this particular parable. Matter of fact, just two verses to it. But I think he's saying a lot. Let's go ahead and jump to it. This is Matthew 13, 31. Let's go ahead and put it on the screen. He says, Matthew 13, 31. He presented another parable to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all other seeds. Uh, but when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. A couple of things about this particular parable. One, notice how he starts it off. He says the kingdom of heaven is like. Now, he's not talking about as some might just kind of glance over. He's not talking about faith. He does deal with faith as the size of a mustard seed. But we'll come to that at some other time. But he's saying the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Now, don't confuse this with other parables when he's talking about a man sowing seed and so forth. He's just using different illustrations, different parables to make different points. He's also making this in regards to kingdom of heaven, salvation, kingdom of God, same thing. He says, and this is uh, smaller than all seeds. Now, obviously there are other seeds that are smaller, but we're speaking about the ones that are known to them at that time. Oh, by the way, there's also kind of a proverb speaking about a mustard seed, the size of a mustard seed. That was kind of a cultural proverb. People talked about that. So I uh, don't want to get too, too hung up on that, that there are actually other seeds that are smaller. But when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants. Now he's speaking up in terms of the seeds or the trees and the plants that are around them. It is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Now, it's not a lot to this passage, just two verses in this whole thing. But what makes this special? Well, we wanted to stop and give a little backdrop to this. Remember, he's speaking to them after, after they have um, said that he is Beelzebub or he is uh, of Satan. Jesus, what he's doing, he says, therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the son of man, it shall be forgiven. But him, I mean to him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. And this is when he begins to speak to them. Now, who's the them? These Jews in parables. Something else to remember as we go forward also, he says that day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea and large a large crowd gathered to him so he got out of the boat and sat down and the whole crowd was standing on the beach so now he's speaking to them he's speaking to this entire this crowd in parables we've already covered two parables now we're covering this third parable and he's speaking about the kingdom of heaven the reason why this is important if we go to the actual backdrop again of this passage he says the kingdom of heaven is like this mustard seed starts off small and it grows large he says the birds of the air come and take its nest. Well, think about this for a second. He's speaking of all of these different people, and he's even speaking to and against some of these Jews who have called him Satan and said that he cast out Satan by the power of Satan, by the power of Beelzebub. And he makes his point that the kingdom of heaven is going to have all the birds of the air or various or different birds of the air are going to take up nests. So guess what it's not going to be, especially to these Jews who have called him Satan. It won't just be you. Notice he says the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. And so which birds? Well, there's a multitude of birds that are in the air. There are various birds, different types, but a lot. It starts off small. The kingdom of heaven is not just for certain people or a small select group. The kingdom of heaven is going to be for others. Now, he's going to flesh this out more in different teachings of his. But I think it's interesting to know and to think and how we can apply this to us is that it's not just you. It's not just people that look like you, that think like you. As a matter of fact, can we be clear and honest? It's not just your denominational belief. It's not just your doctrinal belief. There are going to be people who are Church of God in Christ, Church of Christ, Baptist. Which type of Baptist? Free Will Baptist, uh, Southern Baptist, Missionary Baptist, National Baptist Convention, so forth. Oh, there's a thousand different Baptists. There are going to be those who are Lutherans. There's going to be Presbyterians. There are going to be a multitude. There are even going to be Charismatics and Pentecostals. There are going to be some who are uh, as conservative as you can get. There are going to be the birds of the air because heaven is going to be large. Now, in comparison to the rest of the world, will there be more people in heaven than, than not? No, there'll be more people that don't go to heaven than do, but it's still going to be a large multitude. Now, to what degree, what number? Don't know. But the point is, 
a lot of people are going to be there, not just those that look like you, speak like you, think like you, act like you, talk like you. No, uh, sometimes we forget about it. We forget that there's more than just us. We forget that there's more than just the United States. We forget that there's more than just this hemisphere. We forget that there's more than just people that just speak English. No, culturally, whatever your culture is, your culture is the minority. But God has determined that he is going to take people from all different walks of life. This is why he says to Abraham in Genesis 12, 3, that in you, all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so when we see these parables, all he's doing is piggybacking off of what he stated before. Now he's saying in a way, remember, where these Jews, they don't understand. It. He speaks to them in parables so that having eyes, they don't see, having ears, they don't hear but the truth is still being spoken. And so at some point in time, maybe they'll look back and see, wow, that was a wonderful parable. And when we're in heaven, we'll look back and see, yep, everything that he said was the truth. Amen.